Hi guys, welcome back to the production session. I'd like to show you today some really cool production trick that I'd like to use. If you look uh, below in the screen, you will see the tempo track for the latest track I've been working on, which is a cover to Stevie Wonder's Contusion, a really cool tune that you should uh, check out. And uh, turns out that uh, the tune was not really recorded with a click, at least not uh, on a steady one. And this, um, this track that you see is not the New York skyline. It's uh, basically the tempo changes. And um, first of all, why did I bother to transcribe the tempo changes? Because when I work with, uh, with a click uh, on the production, uh, everything sounds much tighter. And I think in a groovy, funky kind of uh, production, it's a very important thing. But no less important, I could um, actually record with the original music and uh, kind of fill in the tracks more and more as I progress. I started with, um, I started with the bass and uh, then added the drums. And then on top of that, recorded guitars, keys, etc. Um, so why did I choose to pick up the tempo, the original tempos in plural? Uh, and that's quite important. I think tempo um, is not something that is meant to be steady, uh, at least not in this kind of production. I think it's a part of the expression, and uh, that's why I'm guessing that uh, many recordings, at least in the past, chose not to use a click, um, and the drummer was not using any metronome, they just played. Um, and uh, I think it adds a lot to the overall palette of the expression and to the intensity. Because when you are speeding up or slowing down, uh, accelerating, deaccelerating, etc., this is um, becoming a part of the song, a part of the music, and it means something. I think it happens a lot in classical music and in jazz. Uh, less in rock and uh, in other, um, quote-unquote, produced kind of uh, genres. But I think it's possible to do, and uh, from my experience, it's adding a lot to the overall uh, song. It gives it a very solid base uh, of expression. So um, let's listen to just a little bit, without a click, even from the beginning. So if you are, if you have a sharp ear, I think you can already notice that uh, there is some kind of a drift on the tempo. It's I think accelerating a little bit, which means that at this point we need to change our tempo and we need to automate this. So um, let's start listening to that again, this time with a click, and we will see if we are st starting at least with the right click. Of course, we are already drifting. So let's listen carefully, see where is it actually changing. I think we can already safely assume that the click is too slow, I think. Too fast. You know it's too fast when you hear it anticipating it a bit. You already are, we are already syncopated with the beat. Tuck, 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 which means it's too fast, at least for these bars. So let's try to reduce this a little bit. Let's put it on 124, let's say almost 124. <laughs> That's that's still too fast, I think. Let's try 123. Mm -hmm. 
we started to drift because they dis- they started to drift. So we need to correct the tempo now. So let's see where we are. Now the tempo is too slow. You hear it like um, being late after the recording bit, like nta nta nta. Yeah. So we need to fix that tempo. Let's put it back on, let's say, 127. I don't know, but we should try at least this. This is too fast. We hear it drifting. The click is drifting before the beat. Even still, too fast. I can already hear a little bit of a drift. So um, we are pretty much fine now with the with the click until the next tempo change that uh, is happening in the recording. Um, another thing, of course, that we need to do is to make sure that we have the right time signature so that the, the strong beats of the click start on the right places. But that's another thing to do. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. I think um, in this kind of production, at least, it's a, it's a very useful thing to do, for, both for practical and for artistic reasons. So if you are um, reconstructing some tune that was not recorded with a steady click, uh, I think um, this is uh, the right thing to do. But also if you ha- you're having like the, an original song and you want to override the tempo because you, you understand the value of this thing uh, as a part of the overall expression of the song, um, and not just in accelerations and deaccelerations, also in uh, little time drifts, then this is also a useful thing to do, uh, to just design the tempo uh, in uh, in advance if you're working with a click. Um, yeah, so this is what I wanted to show you for today, and uh, I'll see you at the next production session. Bye-bye.